like the Rolex high polished mid links and a brushing on the two outer links. Pagani clasp, if you've seen this one before, they do a kind of reasonable impersonation of a Rolex clasp. It's a proper machine clasp here as well. And there is a flip flop adjustment. So you've got a little bit of on the fly adjustment. These do tend to be quite stiff out of the box. This one, not too bad. If you want to adjust it here, you can see there are indents for micro adjust. You do need quite a fine Bergeon tool to do that, but it's not impossible. It's just a bit fiddly, I guess. That's why they give you the on the fly as well macro on the dial and it's actually all well done for the money. Applied indices, the kind of classic triangle at 12, batons at 6 and 9, usable cyclops there at the 3 o'clock and circular applied indices everywhere else. All the printing is fairly crisp. I don't think they've over cluttered the dial. Personally, I could be doing without the word explorer underneath the Pagani design logo. I don't think it adds anything. But hey, they just wanted to pack in one more Rolex reference if you hadn't already taken the hint. And the loom on this GMT is actually about the best loom that I've come across on a Pagani. You don't get much loom for less than 100 bucks. I haven't really encountered any dive style watches with good loom for less than a ton, but this one doesn't do too badly for itself. The GMT hands loomed and the, the main hour and minute hands do do a reasonable job of hanging on in there towards the end of the 20 minute test period. So display case bank, screw down, 100 meters of water resistance and solid end links. Now that movement is a Pearl DG5833 GMT. Not much information I could find about it. I've also heard it referred to as a Minju 5833. I popped both of these on the time grapher with the kind of default 53 degree lift angle. The Pepsi one was running a little fast coming in, plus 15, plus 20. I actually got pretty good results from the Pac-Man that was running at plus two, plus three, plus four. Both of them, to give them their due, had healthy amplitudes and minimal beat errors. There is, however, a lever for adjustment here, so if you want to take the back off, it shouldn't be too difficult, and you can tweak the timing of these yourself if you're so inclined. So if you unscrew the crown to the first position, the movement can be manually wound by rolling the crown forward. Pull it out to the second position. If you roll the crown forward, you control the date there, and as you can see, if you roll it backwards, GMT hand is fully independent, so it isn't slaved in the way that the Vostok GMT was that I reviewed a few months ago, and it doesn't only click forward half an hour at a time like the ETA 2893s in the Christopher Ward and the Zeros that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. So to that end, it's really not that bad. Pull it out one more, and the movement hacks, and the hour and minute hand can be adjusted thereafter. No issues with this one either, with the crown, all screwing down, threaded quite nicely. And they really do look more expensive than the price tag suggests when you get them on the wrist. They wear well, there's a reason that so many companies rip off Rolex's design, and it's because they're just so comfortable on wrist. And as discussed, I love a bit of distressed leather on the Pepsi and Coke style colorways. This is a collar Epps Boletto, 20mm lug width on this model, means you shouldn't have difficulty swapping it out should the need arise. Legibility is never an issue with these watches when you get them into some natural light. The hands and indices all very well proportioned thanks to Rolex. No anti-reflective coating on that sapphire though, and again, you can't expect too much for the money. But what were my QC issues? What were the two moans and nickels that I mentioned earlier on? Well, did you spot my problem with the Batman? Take a look at the bezel insert. That blue should extend halfway up the six, and not kind of halfway down the six. I did email Pagani about this. I sent them a photo, and they said that they were aware of the mistake, that they had taken steps to rectify it, and that all models that were being sold from this point on would have the correct insert. But have you bought one before now? Did you get the same bezel insert as me? It's not perhaps crushingly noticeable, but it's not great, is it? And on the Pepsi one, perhaps you can see it on the bottom of the crown guards there. There's a little bit of over brushing. It's brushed rather than polished. Again, not critical, but not fantastic. I've said it before, but it does bear repeating again. Your money spread very thinly across these Paganis, so you wouldn't necessarily expect them to have incredible quality control. I wouldn't have expected them to cock up the bezel like that, though. Glad to hear that they have resolved that issue for all future sales. So don't expect a Rolex. Don't expect an heirloom. Don't expect perfection. But you can expect something that looks fantastic and offers more for your money.